celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another interview on Overcomers TV Live. I'm Pastor Chuck, and I have the honor and the privilege and the joy to introduce to you some of our ministry partners and friends. Our next guest, Nikita Biddle, Christian Legal Society. Nikita, thank you so much for uh, joining us again this morning. Thank you, Pastor Chuck. It's it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, we did a we did one a few days ago. Had a little bit of streaming issues. We have better internet this morning, so I would say take twos are better. But as you and I <laughs> talked and prayed, there's a lot of topics we can cover. We're praying about maybe having a monthly podcast broadcast. Um, yeah, unpack some Christian legal topics. And, uh, you know, again, we go with Overcomers TV from 1 John 5, 4. It says, whoever's born of God overcomes. This is the victory we have over the world is our faith. We focus on that last half of the birth. So let's talk a little bit about your faith journey. How did Jesus become real to you? Absolutely. So um, Jesus has always been real to me. I grew up in a Christian household. And, you know, I received Christ as my personal Savior at a young age, thanks to my grandma, who uh, was led by the Lord to... I used to go with my grandma to church on the weekends. Uh, well, I went with my parents to church too, but I went with my grandma one particular weekend when I was a teenager. And um, on the way back, she was playing this old gospel gospel song. It's called Master Can You Use Me? And I remember just feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit and just crying, just tears. And I was just, she looked back and she was like, she, I know what you're experiencing, you know, and she talked to me about salvation. And if you remember the old tape deck, she, I had to wait for the tape to rewind all the way back in, in her Jimmy. And we just sat there in the yard and um, she just ministered to me. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Well, as God's providence would have it, a couple Sundays later at my church where my parents took me um, as a kid, um, the choir sang the exact same song. I felt the same presence of the Holy Spirit, went up to the altar and gave my heart to the Lord. Um, so I've been living for the Lord for a very long time. Um, not perfect, but definitely um, just really just trying to yield to him and what he wants to do in my life. Amen. That's a good word. Um, and, you know, we talk about Jeremiah 1.5, uh, I guess because of the pro-life, pro-choice, you know, uh, debate that's been going on. Uh, he told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, uh, I knew you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations, someone who speaks truth to the nations. And uh, that's just a concept that even before conception, God knew you and chose you to be here for such a time as this. Talk a little bit about that. Man, there's so much I can say with that. <laughs> man, there's so much I can say with that. My parents had me at a young age and thank God they chose to have me. Um, in spite of their shortcomings, in spite of being young, they chose to have me. And it's so interesting because I think of it as, um, you know, parents are really just a steward over um, the life that God gives them and cultivate that into the direction and the purpose that God has. And the fact that he knew me before I was even in my mother's womb and the fact that he imparted in my parents that I would even be an attorney. My mom used to say all the time, you like to argue and prove your point and you think everything has to be fair. You're going to be an attorney because you talk too much. And sure enough, she was right. <laughs> so, um, you know, what God does is amazing. And he just uses us because he wants to, not because he has to. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And uh, so many people, when they think about the gospel, they think, oh, saved from hell. No, he's, you're saved for heaven and saved for relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't get a boyfriend or a husband because you didn't want to be alone. Some people do, but you know, you're with somebody because you want to be with them. You love that person and you want to do life with them, do things, go places, you know, lots of things to do together uh, in family relationship. And even friends, some friends come and go because of geographical location. But if mm -hmm. they live next door, man, you'd be best friends forever. Some people call them soulmates, you know, and I think God knits the body parts together. And let's talk about Christian Legal Society. It's a society 
of people who've been knit together with some common interests. So talk a little about uh, your role, your involvement with the ministry. Absolutely, man. What a blessing to be here at Christian Legal Society to serve the body of Christ in this capacity. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Christian Legal Society, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and we're dedicated to serving Jesus through the practice and the study of law. And, uh, and that includes the defense of religious freedom, life, the sanctity of life issues, um, and serving the poor and the needy. We are on campuses across the nation, law, law school campuses. Um, we have four ministries. I oversee our attorney ministries, which is where our attorneys come together in fellowship. It's actually how CLS was birthed. Um, if you can imagine back in the 60s, um, how did you find another Christian lawyer? It wasn't going in a telephone book or walking next door and talking to folks. Um, if there's um, an opportunity for lawyers to come together at the American Bar Association, and CLS was birthed um, with four Christian lawyers um, that came together that wanted to fellowship. And that's what attorney ministries is all about. Fellowshipping, encouraging one another, being equipped for the practice of law, but also intertwining our faith with the practice of law. Um, so that's attorney ministries. We have law student ministries on campuses that do uh, very similar work that our attorneys do. Um, and then we have uh, the Center for Law and Religious Freedom, where we defend religious freedom, First Amendment, constitutional issues. Uh, we know several cases that came down this week, the, the Groff case. Um, we're waiting for another case. Uh, there are just so many different cases that um, CLS is actively involved in making sure that we have the religious freedom to practice. And then last but not least, and certainly pun intended, is the Christian legal aid clinics. We serve the poor and the needy. We serve those um, that are marginalized, that need um, help in a difficult season in their life um, and can't afford legal representation. We have clinics all over the United States, including um, Canada as well. And we just do what we can as attorneys to give back and do what God commissioned us to do, which is um, to, to take care of the least of these. He says what you do to the least of these. Um, and so that's what we try to do through our through our mission at CLS, our attorneys, our law students, and any other individuals that want to get involved. Yeah, that's amazing because at the end of the day, um, the Great Commission, the Great Commandment is to love God and to love people. Yeah. I've always heard it preached that love is an action word. You can say yeah. I love you pretty easy, but, you know, I want to sh show me the love, right? Show me the money. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> in <German class. laughs> show me the love, the qua. You know, it's all about action, right? Love and, and yeah. some will say that you can spell love, T-I-M-E. Mm. That's where you spend your time, you know. It's, uh, That's powerful. Love takes time, yeah. And, it, you know, it, and you guys have studied, you've been equipped, uh, the mm -hmm. legal realms, the paperwork, it's quite intimidating. So, and you <laughs> mentioned it last time, and it's worth talking about. People are in some pretty stressful situations when they're being attacked, um, yeah. especially the poor, and they can't defend themselves. An advocate, which is a lot like Jesus, he's our advocate. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, how that, it, that speaks the gospel. Let me tell you, you know, um, before I came to CLS, I was a prosecutor, and um I thought that's what I would always be because I believe in the importance of advocacy, speaking up for those who can't speak up for themselves. Using the tools and the resources that you have as an attorney is vital. Um, I don't think we understand the power of persuasion, the power of influence and advocacy. And, you know, Jesus does it. And for me, that's where my heart is, is just really um what is God saying about all of this? Even as a prosecutor, you know, a lot of people would joke and say like, oh, you just want to lock our men up or mainly lock our black men up. And no, that's not what I want to do. I want to be a voice uh, for the Lord. Um, I want to be that advocate for even the defendant. I wanted to do that. And I think that's very important. You know, why do people do what they do? They're at a broken um, state in their life. They're in desperate times. You probably are seeing them at the worst moments of their life. It doesn't matter what area of law you practice, whether it's family law, criminal law, um, wills and estates. People are at very delicate stages in their life where they just need um, they need Jesus, but they need a tangible person or tangible things in their life, food, shelter, clothing, um, freedom, whatever it is. And as a Christian attorney, we have the ability to give them Jesus, you don't have to say Jesus, 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 but it's just the love that you do, the yeah. actions that you do, walking in integrity with opposing right. counsel, just whatever it is that the Lord is using to do to help a small business owner through their legal documents or whatever it is. You know, God wants to use us in small ways that can make a mighty and a great impact. 
Yeah. As you're talking too, you know, you mentioned at the beginning, it's bipartisan. Mm -hmm. And we live in such a culture, people are taking sides because of a particular paradigm or a view or an opinion, what they think is right or wrong. And now all of a sudden, you know, polarization, mm -hmm. North and South Pole, we all get that. But God is for everybody. everybody. And as you were saying, you kind of had a heart for the defendant when you were a prosecutor. He's really for justice. He wants righteous judgments. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, a lot of people quote the verse, don't judge lest you be judged. But later on in Luke, Jesus says, judge with a righteous judgment. And mm -hmm. how do we do that? It's the law. It's God's right. law, not man's law, because we're starting to come up with some laws that actually <laughs> contradict the law of God, the heart of God. But mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on that? And he's you know, all this, justice. He's a just God. You know, I ministered on justice. Uh, I guess it's been about a year or two ago at my church. Um, and I love that word. Like, I just love it because God's version of justice. If you look at the, the Hebrew and the Greek um, origins of the word justice, it means impartiality, right? Scripture says righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And you think about foundations, you can't build anything without a foundation. So if righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne, then how much more should we operate in that, right? We want to we be joint heirs with Christ. Uh, and so you have to walk in righteousness, which is doing right. You have to walk in justice, impartiality, even when even whenever it doesn't feel good even when you are in the wrong we have to let him be right and so man i, I could talk about justice all day long <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we need to talk about because faith comes by hearing hearing the word of god and Absolutely. when we're looking at the word of god this has been proven to be true anybody who set out to disprove the bible became an awesome on fire <laughs> believer at the end of the day because the evidence it it withstands evidentiary law you know it's testimony of god showing up lee strobel was a lawyer i don't know you heard his story right case for a creator case for christ case for faith mm -hmm. he was uh he was a, a lawyer and then he got a job at the chicago tribune being a writer he was an atheist went through harvard him and his wife mm -hmm. were atheists when they got married no god no religion she gets radically saved and uh long story short he set out to disprove Christianity to try to save her from a cult. So he spent like two years investigating and looking at the evidence, the scriptures mm -hmm. and testimony as a lawyer would and as a reporter would. And he says, if the evidence points to a creator, I've got to, you know, I got to change my position, you know, but for a long time, you know, he was an evolutionist and didn't believe in God. But uh, yeah, I mean, the word. You know, he spoke at our conference. What's that? Yeah. He just spoke at our conference. Get out. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Powerful, powerful yeah. testimony. You know, yeah. God God will use anybody. And and the scripture says that no man comes to the Father unless he first draws them. And so he's going to draw all of us if we yield to that drawing. Yeah, that's good. So we do this show again. We're always trying to raise awareness of different ministries within the body of Christ, hoping that people can pray about their involvement. And, you know, we all have prayer time. A lot of this is a spiritual battle. Talk okay. about ways people can pray for you guys and support and get involved with the Christian Legal Society. Well, you said it. The first way you can support Christian Legal Society is prayer. Um, we are living in a dark time. And in darkness, light shines brighter, right? Think about it when you go in a dark room. <laughs> Just the little bit of light will just brighten up that darkness and so prayer is vital um praying for us as we continue to do the lord's work in serving the poor and the needy serving the law students on campuses fighting for religious freedom even on law school campuses um there there's so much work to do so if you could just pray for us that would be the the best way that you can do it um and if you want to join in with us, you can also give financially. Of course, we are a nonprofit organization, so uh, we cherish and appreciate every financial donation. We operate off of generous donations, uh, so you can do that. If you want to partner with us more long term, uh, we would love for you to become a member. Of course, you would have to agree with our statement of faith. But um, as a believer, as a Christian, that's pretty simple to do. Um, you can become a member. We never want finances to be a burden or hindrance from you becoming a member. So you can join at any rate. Um, if you're not an attorney, you're not a law student, you're not a professor, or you're not in the legal field, we still would love to have you as a member. We have a, um, a non-attorney colleague category that you could join. 
Um, but you could also spread the word about CLS. People are always looking for Christian lawyers. People are always looking for opportunities to give um, at our legal aid clinics. You could spread the word um, about Christian Legal Society. Churches uh, need conflict re resolution. Churches need documents that people could look over. People need legal advice. We have a referral directory online um, for all of our Christian attorneys that are members. So there's so many ways that you can get involved. Pray, give, uh, become a member. And if you want to partner, feel free to reach out to me at the number um, below. I would love to partner with other organizations. We are a body of Christ. And that means we're many members, one body with Jesus Christ as our head. There's so many ways we can work together um, to help advance his kingdom in the earth. And so I would love to partner with you all. And so you can definitely reach out to me um, in those ways. Yeah, man. Springfield, Virginia, you guys borderline D.C.? Uh, I wouldn't say borderline D.C. We are um, right off the Beltway, uh, yeah. for, right off of 495. So not too far from D.C. Definitely not too far from D.C. About maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes from D.C. Mm -hmm. Far enough to enjoy Virginia, close enough to get there when you have to. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Exactly. It's all like Donkey Kong. Got to be in D.C. is where it's all happening. <laughs> yeah, you can get to D.C. in no time. Um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love your heart and uh, I, I love our partnership. I think there's a lot of great things for us to do. And I know under, you know, there's certain folks like David. I know he's the CEO. Talk a little bit about your team, your staff, leadership. And of course, I always say the worker bees make all the honey. But, you know, teamwork <laughs> makes the dream work. Yes, we have a great team here at Christian Legal Society. Um, we have our CEO, David Damo, who is out here uh, doing a lot of work. Um, so if you want him to be a part of the work that you're doing as our CEO, feel free to reach out to him as well. Uh, each ministry, the four ministries I mentioned earlier, are overseen by an attorney. And so there are four of us that are directors. My colleague, Annie Bennett, oversees our Christian legal aid clinics. My colleague, Anton Sorkin, oversees our law student ministries. I oversee, of course, as director of attorney ministries. Um, and then we'll have a new colleague coming on board as the new Center uh, for Religious Freedom, Law and Religious Freedom Director. Um, but right now we have an interim director who is an attorney that's been working with us for a very long time. Um, and so, yeah, so we have our, our four directors. We have a team of administrative staff as well. We have our COO, our CFO, and our development and communications team. So we're a small nonprofit. We have a small team, less than 15 people. Um, but making but a big impact. Making a big impact. I was giving you to say that, you know, <laughs> one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. We're over here <laughs> as a little army of the Lord, right? He didn't need many yeah. with Gideon. So <laughs> yeah, amen. that's it. I love it. Love your heart for the word too. Cause you know, you're right. Gideon was a great example, but um, you know, God gets all the glory and um, most people aren't called to do any, anything great by themselves. It, uh, Absolutely. That's why when I get to heaven, I'm hunting down cliche writers. Teamwork makes a dream work. Birds of a feather <laughs> flock together. Somebody had to put these phrases together first. You know, somebody up in heaven's going, that's mine. I said that first, you know, and if it was any good. It was probably inspired by the Holy Spirit. I'm sure every language has their own cliches. But, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. So it's true. Like, you know, unity within the body of Christ. There are some battles. David and Goliath is a great, you know, uh, picture of some of the issues that we're tackling today. And by faith, David said, I'm going to take mm -hmm. care of this big old Philistine, you know, and everybody in the, ar the rest of the army was shaking in their boots. <laughs> and, uh, he had the faith to, to face the giant of the day. And Man. we just can't put our head in the sand and say, I'm not getting political because that's where the laws yeah. are being established yeah. and, and all that. So you got to get in it. And, it, you know, we all have a different role. We all have a different part. The body of Christ has lots of different parts, but we need to encourage and support one another. I'm preaching at this point. Why do you do what you do? That's my question. Let me tell you. Go ahead and preach. I'm going to preach next. Let me tell you. I, I do it because God called me to do it. I'm going to tell you, and we, we spoke about this briefly before. I never imagined being in ministry full time. Now, some people might say, oh, I always thought Lakita would do that because I love the Lord and have for a very long time. But I never imagined. I just wanted to be an attorney. I just want to make a difference in the courtroom. Um, and, I, and I did for a season. And what I realized is that there are seasons in life. And this is a season where God has equipped me in previous seasons to do the work in this season to encourage and equip attorneys. And for me, as an attorney, having 
work those gruesome hours, 12, 14 hour days, you know, no thank yous, um, judges <laughs> cutting up one side and down the other. You know, I am blessed to be able to minister to attorneys, to travel all over to our membership, to encourage them, to pray with them, to just let them know they're not in it alone. You know, you can get tunnel vision and think that you're in it alone. And so I do what I do because the Lord has called me in this season to do this. I never would have imagined um, leaving being a prosecutor, leaving the courtroom, and who knows what he's going to do in the days to come. But what I do know is that I am yielded to his will for my life. And while it doesn't make sense to me always, and it probably doesn't make sense to those around me, um, I know that he's doing something, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't know the plans you have for me, but could you reveal just a little bit? <laughs> so, yeah, um, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah, one step at a time. That's how he does it. <laughs> you know, absolutely. So in the pandemic, you know, when things shifted culturally, politically, um, and in the criminal world, um, trials were getting backed up. I just talked to the Lord in my quiet time and I was like, you know what, Lord, it's nice to go out for a walk and listen to the birds. It's yeah. nice to spend time with you, um, but it's not nice to have all this stress in my living room and my, in my room and, all, you know, in my workspace at home. And, um, and I was just like, there has to be more that you want me to do for the kingdom to advance your gospel. And like, and, and I'm not afraid, Lord, I'm not afraid. So, you know, use me as your vessel, open my mouth and let me speak your words because, you know, I spoke in the courtroom. So if you want me to do something else, let me know. And, um, you know, he brought me back to CLS, which is the very first experience I ever had um, working at a law school before I even went to law school in 2008. I worked at Georgetown Law School and the students would always invite me to their CLS chapter meetings. And that's one student that would always invite me. She is actually an attorney that I keep in touch with from time to time. But the Lord brought me back to that in 2020 as I was seeking his face about what what's next, Lord. And he said, this is where your faith and the practice of law intertwine. And that was at Christian Legal Society. And I say, you know what? The body of Christ is so divided right now. Everybody was all over the place. Can we go to church? Can we not go to church? COVID this, COVID that, you know? And so I'm just like, what can I do to help unite the body of Christ? Now, I didn't expect this. That's for sure. <laughs> but I just wanted to do my little part. And I feel like that, um, you know, too much is given, much is required. So I'm doing my little part. <laughs> well, our little part, there's ripple effects. They go far and wide. And God sees and he tracks all of it. We don't see a lot of it. I think we'd become spiritual prideful if we saw the impact we were truly making when we're focused and on task. But again, he gets all the glory because he gave us the work to do. It's like Jesus and the woman at the Samaritan well, you know, and they're like, get something to eat. It's like my food is the work my father gave me. And that's what we that's what we uh, that's what we live on. That's good. Final question before we close in prayer. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us about Christian Legal Society? Uh, um, let me see. What can I share? I think for me, um, one of the things I realized in ministry work is that the body of Christ is so diverse and we're all over, as you mentioned earlier, you know, there's people with different partisanships and, um, just people all over from different backgrounds, different experiences, even lawyers, we all practice in different areas. Um, but coming to Christian Legal Society is not like any other thing that I've experienced. And I'm not saying that just because I work here. I'm saying that because I've experienced it personally, even throughout law school during difficult moments in my life. I had Christian Legal Society um, and my colleagues. I would just encourage people to connect with us, connect with the work that the Lord is doing. Um, just connect with us. And it doesn't matter what area of law. It doesn't matter if you're not even in law. We need pastors. We need prayer warriors. Just other people to be able to connect with us. Connect with the work that we're doing. Um, you know, as the body of Christ, we have to be united. And I think that's the thing that I have learned in being here for the last two years is we have to be on one accord. We have to really be on one accord. And so the more we can become unified, the more that we can do the work of the Lord. Yeah. Amen to that. That's a good word there. Well, we're going to uh, look at our schedules. I know Pamela's got me back to back till October, but um, maybe we can do a monthly uh, topical broadcast. And I know we've been talking about having our television crew get out there and do a documentary where we can get multiple cameras and B-roll and ministry and action footage. 
you know, people who like us and know us, they can tolerate two talking heads for a while. <laughs> Social media. I think we all got ADD, ADHD, something, you know, as far as the <laughs> span. You know, we were just getting, and that, you know, it's, it's just we're getting thrown a lot. There's a lot coming at us. So, everything's you know, I, 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 attention. Yeah. I call it a, a positive. Hey, we're multitasking, right? Isn't that a good thing? You know, isn't that supposed to be a good thing? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But let's close in prayer. And, Absolutely. Uh, I'll put our little graphics, uh, our scrolling graphics away, and then I'll close. I'll zoom in for that. If you can lead us, I'm a ladies first kind of guy. I find myself uh, using pronouns more now than ever. Let me tell you, you need to use those pronouns. Like, <laughs> I am a woman, and I will lead us <laughs> for sure. Feeling darn fact. That's all I want to say. You know, I don't care what you feel like. But you zoom back in on my face, though. <laughs> fact to the case. It's all about the facts of the case, right? You know, Absolutely. Objection, overruled, sustained. Sticking to the facts of the case. I'm sorry. We got to get you in a trial. You got. We got to get you in <laughs> Get you an honorary doctorate degree in law. <laughs> One final word, too. We're called to be a witness, to yeah. testify to the truth, to what we've seen, what we've heard. We've heard the voice of God. We have a relationship. He's a real person, and we're just testifying. You need to go vertical, right? That's our, that's our, that's our, and that's what we're going to yeah. do. That's awesome. Let's pray. Yeah, absolutely. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you. You've called us for such a time as this. I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice that's able to hear this broadcast. I pray that you would strengthen them in whatever area that they are weak, Lord God. And I pray that you would continue to draw them closer to you, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, Father, because you are able to save us from all things. You're even able to save us from ourselves, Lord God. So I thank you, Lord God, for the work that you're doing in Christian Legal Society, for the work that you're doing through Pastor Chuck and Overcomers, Lord. I thank you for this partnership. I thank you that you're going out in the airways. Father, I pray that even those that are listening right now would be drawn to you, that they would cry out, what must I do to be saved? How can I know the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Lakita, Pastor Chuck? How can I know the God that they talk about? I pray, Lord, that you would draw them right now in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for the work that you're doing. I pray that you would go even to the least of these, Lord God, that would go out there, Lord God. Help us to find you in the moments throughout our day, Lord God. Let us not overlook what you're doing in our lives. Even the people that we come into contact with, I pray that you would forgive us of our sins and help us to walk more in love, Lord God. Love with our neighbors, love with those around us, even love for our enemies. Father, I pray for those that are in authority, our president, our judiciary, our legislative branches, state, local, and federal. Father God, I pray that you would bless even the president of the United States. You said to pray for those that are in authority that we might live a peaceable life, Lord. And we need peace in these United States of America. We need peace throughout the world. So, Father, I bless them. I bless them. No matter what their parties are, I bless them. Pray that you would bless them tremendously, Lord God. Give them wisdom and discernment. As they lead and guide us, Lord God, I pray that every man, woman, boy, child, girl will be drawn into you as Jesus Christ, Lord of our lives, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you for Lakita and I and also David um, passing the baton to her and I to do this uh, this, this broadcast. And, and now I know why. Because, uh, Lord, she's a, she's a mighty woman of valor. And she's got great faith. She knows your word. She loves you and she's representing. Uh, she's a ambassador for Christ, Lord, um, in the marketplace and also in the battlefield where, uh, again, concepts, ideas and feelings and, and laws are being debated. And, and uh, we just thank you, Lord, that you are raising up an army and uh, this ministry, although there may be 15 now, I know you're adding to it. We pray for the board members. We pray for every donor who sowed good seed into this ministry. We pray for more folks to come alongside and co-labor with them and join the cause, join the fight uh, to, to use our time, our treasure, our talents. Every every minute of every day, Lord, every breath you give us may be for your glory. Give us wisdom on how we can strate strategize together. Yes. And use um, our gifts and our talents to work together. And I thank you for the tools and technology to broadcast and record. Uh, we do pray for an opportunity for our television crew to travel there and get the rest of the story and interview the rest of the team. And uh, Lord, whatever you want us to do, you show us what's next. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Good That's good. That's amazing. Amen. Praise God. You know, I like amen. to do this bump at the end, right? This <laughs> bump, don't break the camera. Bam. 
Uh, oh man, what a pleasure. It was a joy. Fun, fun times. For real, for real, for real. Until our next interview with Christian Legal Society next month and uh, Overcomers TV family wishes you and your family be blessed. Peace out. Absolutely. Enjoy the weekend. The 4th of July Absolutely. weekend. We're going to celebrate our independence, but our dependence on God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Love uh, it. Good stuff. Talk to you soon. Have a good weekend. All right. You too. From promos and commercials to full-length shows, Horizon Media Studios can script, voice, and fully produce programming for television, streaming, and other media. For 15 years and 250 ministries, this Christ-centered 501c3 nonprofit ministry is dedicated to high-quality production and helping other nonprofits produce media. Horizon Media Studios is seeking new ministries to feature. Tell us your story, 561-313-3165.